I'm gonna be real for a second, man. Y'all are going to be extremely mad at me and I can't even blame y'all. I'm mad at myself. I just spent probably an hour and a half doing a really good video. I explained, you know, somebody commented, man, like, man, it's been 10 days since the last episode, P. Well, yeah, well, yeah. So I came in today, recorded a beautiful video of the second half of the season post trade deadline. Uh, we were absolutely incredible. We're gonna go over that. And I recorded the play in. I simulated the play in, and it was exciting seeing the way that the playoffs was, break, uh, you know, panning out. A lot of teams were one game apart, this game apart. So the last like day of simulating was it was like crazy just around the league i also went through you know the buyout market i, I put cp3 on the team that was a little storyline with that because he turned down a particular team for some more money uh, then we did the play-in simulator and it was some you know a, a couple of important teams they make it and i went in to go edit the video just to figure out my mic was not synced in with stream labs which i used to record my videos it just mind-blowing because like that now is no reason for my mic to not have been like hooked up or programmed because i obviously use this mic every single damn day but that's me that's me being cocky i always do my mic check mic check one two one two and today was just a day that i decided hey, i ain't got to do it I, I there's no need for me to do that i just rushed and jumped into it and that's why you always do your pre-game check whether you're a basketball player, an analyst, a content creator, a swimmer, a chef, you always do your pre-game routine. But anyway, as y'all can see to the left of me, 55 win season, y'all. 55 win season. We are a team that came in last year. I believe we went into the play-in. A um, lot of different things going on around the team. Didn't know how we were going to pivot and, and turn this into one of those type of years, and we did it rather quickly as well um but yeah when we were simulating i wish that i could show y'all the full schedule because now that i'm in the playoffs it's only showing me the playoff uh tree but we had a second half that was like amazing it, it, it was amazing i know it say last 10 uh six and four but we had a stretch where we won like seven games in a row then we lost one the mavericks ended a, a win streak for us twice we won about seven or eight in a row we lost to the mavericks then we won another five in a row we played the mavericks again we lost to them again also during this stretch we lost two games in the second half to the charlotte hornets and it almost made me flip out because we beat some really really good teams we would blow out the bucks we blow out the, uh, the knicks and then we would just lose to the charlotte hornets we blow, blow out the 76ers we beat the 76ers twice in two days back to back we beat the Boston Celtics twice, and then we lost to the Hornets. So that was one of those frustrating ones where I'm like, man, we, we need every win we could get because, as you can see, us and the Magic tied, but we own the tiebreaker. So it got to a point where I'm like, man, if we would have beat the Hornets at least one of those two times, we wouldn't even have to depend on a tiebreaker. But all in all, 55 game, uh, 55 win season, the way that the playoffs is looking like is this. Very interesting storyline, y'all. The play-in was extremely nice. So we had the Pelicans playing against the Clippers. The Pelicans beat the Clippers. So that storyline there was, is Kawhi and Paul George going to miss the playoffs completely? I don't know if y'all paid attention. LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers, they missed the playoffs completely. Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, a team that I was trying to get CP3 to, they missed the playoffs completely. So Paul George and Kawhi was almost there. They lost that. Um, the Jazz, the team who... Had the money for Chris Paul, just not enough, and he decided to not go there. They lose to the Rockets in the play-in, and I felt like they would have won that game if they had Chris Paul. Chris Paul turned them down multiple times and instead chose to go to the Nets for basically the same amount of money. A lot of these teams that were contenders, I tried to create space for Chris Paul. They just did not have the money. Um, I released guys to see if they could you know, make some roster space for him. The Miami Heat didn't have the money for him. Uh, the Timberwolves didn't have the money for them. The Suns didn't have the money for them. And then I had to come down to these teams that had the money, which were the Magic, Nets, Pacers, Pistons, Rockets, and Jazz. And he did not want to go to the Jazz. Um, and the, the, this next team that I went to was the Nets, and he quickly and happily accepted that. And then Brooke Lopez went to the Pistons because um, they needed a backup big, and they're right there in the playoffs. They, The Eastern side, the the Bucks were the team we were trying to stay away from. 
We did not want to play the Bucks in the first round because obviously you have Giannis and Dame. You have Chris Middleton. Bobby Portis has been playing well since they let go of Brooke Lopez. They brought in Malcolm Brogdon. Really good team out there in Milwaukee. They lose to the Detroit Pistons. We were so nervous because we had a chance to play against the Pistons. I mean, the uh, Bucks, the Knicks, or the Pistons. And the Knicks end up getting the sixth seed because they these all of these teams were one game apart. They end up getting the sixth seed. The Pistons, who I just knew were going to lose this playing game, won this playing game. Not only did they win it, y'all, they absolutely dominated this playing game. They won by 28 points. 28 points for K Cunningham. I mean, uh, to win 37 and 9 for K Cunningham. And then you go over to Milwaukee, and Damian Lillard gives you 16 points on 13 shots, two or seven from three with three turnovers. Dame had more turnovers than, than, than three-point field goals made. Giannis gave you 24, 6, and 6, 7 turnovers. Like, just a shitter for the Bucks. And so, I'm I'm happy because we like, okay, we're going to, we, we much rather play the Detroit Pistons over the Heat, the Knicks, or the Bucks, without a doubt. Inexperience, don't have that overwhelmingly top-heavy talent. We like playing against them. Not only did that happen as a shitter for them, look at the game of Sar Thompson had. 10 points, 23 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks. In fucking sane playing game for, uh, um, um, I almost called him a man, Asar Thompson. Crazy. I'm talking about storylines just all over the place. I just want y'all to see all of this information and just think about me reacting to it in real time. Because the last video that I just spent an hour and a half recording had all of like, this all was in real time and then it just oh man but anyway so we go from that that's that storyline then you have the heat over here they handle business against the pacers they they show that their playoff experience is real and they overcome a 28 point performance from benedict matherin and a 25 and 11 point uh performance from halliburton um and jimmy and bam jovich hockey they do their thing they do their thing so now we get here, and I'm like, uh-oh, these two teams face each other again. If the Bucks miss the playoffs completely, that's going to be a huge storyline for them, a huge storyline. And that's exactly what happened. They got destroyed another uh, again. They got destroyed again. Um, this is a 32-point loss. So they lose by 28 to, the, the, to the, the Pistons, and then they lost by 32 to the Heat. In back-to-back playing games, they lost by twi- 20 or more, two times crazy they almost lost by a combined 60 points in two playing games and again Damian Lillard 17 points or 13 shots one to six from three Giannis 24 and 11 uh just just all around bad when we go into the offseason we gotta make we something gotta happen something th- th- this ain't this this is too big of a failure for them to just come back with the same team some some, some dramatic things is gonna happen there um and look who they look how they lost that was their box score. Terry Rozier and Josh Richardson combined for 48 points. Crazy. Then over here, the Clippers turned into the Clippers against the Rockets. They blew them out of the water. So they're going to be going against the Mavericks in a first-round matchup. That possibly can be a real-life one. You got the Nuggets versus the Warriors. 4-5 matchup. Going to be very, very, very nice. The, the Minnesota Timberwolves against the Memphis Grizzlies. Ja Moran against Anthony Edwards. Rudy versus the rookie Alex Saar, the France guys. You got uh, Car Anthony Towns, Jaron Jackson. This is going to be nice. D'Angelo Russell against his old team. He's their sixth man. Their sixth man is Nas Reed. Desmond Bain versus Jaden McDaniels. He just came off an injury, so we got to put him in a, the Timberwolves lineup. I This is going to be must-watch TV for me. And then you got OKC against the Pelicans team that's hungry with Zion and Ingram. Uh, they got some depth. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough b- battle, but they they're not gonna fold for them. So, um, yeah, that 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 Western Conference side look real nice. Cleveland versus Miami, Philly versus Boston, Philadelphia 76ers against the Boston Celtics, and B. Siakam and Maxi against Tatum, Brown, and their their Fantastic Five. Um, Orlando against New York is gonna be box office real real good slug match right here. And we should be able to handle our business against Detroit. And when we win this, we'll play against one of these two teams instead of one of these two teams. So I'm loving our way. I think we have a nice route 
on the Eastern Conference side, we have the easiest route to the Eastern Conference Finals. By no means do I think the Sixers, I mean, do I think the Knicks or the Magic are going, um, we're just going to walk over. But I'd rather play one of those two teams than Philadelphia or Boston because I just don't think we have an answer for Embiid. And the Celtics just have a, a all-stars uh, five, starting five. So I'm loving that for us. As far as the awards around the league, um, nah, not awards of the week. Where are the general awards, season awards? Why are they telling me player of the week for season awards? Um, where do I go for that? I don't know why they're acting uh, regular season awards. There we go. Luka won MVP. Alex Sar wins the Rookie of the Year, giving him 14-8. Um, two blocks and a steal, 47% from the field. And you have Malik Monk as the Sixth Man of the Year. Vic as the Defensive Player of the Year. 18-11 and 11 is a little disappointing. He should be averaging way more than that. Three and a half blocks, almost two steals. Incredible. Andrew Nimhard traded to the Washington Wizards and became the most improved player. That's extremely dope. Um, Got to get that three-point percentage up, though. But he had 12 and 7, uh, almost two steals. Giannis, clutch player of the year, wasn't that clutch in the play-in games. J.B. Bickerstaff is the coach of the year. I'm the exec of the year. You know how I'm doing shit out here in Atlanta. And then when you talk about all NBA, Luka and four bigs, Tyrese Halliburton and all guards, Trey made the third team, um, all defensive first team, Luka Doncic, y'all. Luka Doncic made an all-NBA first team team. Uh, all this defensive second team, Asar as a, what, sophomore year player or third year player. I don't even know where we at right now in the sim. I think he's a sophomore season. Um, all rookie. So all around, real good. Um, this dude was big for us, I will say, in that second half of the season. Lonzo in the rotation, we we. we we rebuilt. Um, I don't know. I almost messed up that, that little sentence up. But when, when we rebuilt this uh, rotation, Lonzo was as versatile of a player as, as, as you can have. And that, that gave us so much. He was able to be the backup point guard for Trey. He played next to Trey for some some minutes throughout the game as a two. He played small four for us. And that allows some of these younger guys to be able to get minutes. I love the way we played, man. Just to give you all a breakdown of how everybody's stats and season went. Um Trey gave us 28 and 28 and 8 on 49, 37, and 90. Um, that's still a game. You had Lari giving us 19 and 8 um, on 45 and 38. You had 18 and 9 and 5 from Jalen Johnson, 53% from the field. Clint Capella gave us 8 and 10 uh, with almost two blocks. A Con Wu, 6 and a half with 5 and a half. Lonzo, 10, 6, and 3 with a steal. 48% from, from the field, 43% from three, 81% from the free throw line. Huge numbers. Huge. Um, we got AJ Griffin, almost 40, almost 50, 40, 90. Incredible. Almost 50, 40, 90 off the bench. Matisse Thibel, we know his, his value doesn't come from the box score. Almost two steals a game, though. Um, Jalen Smith fell out of rotation. Dalen Terry not in the rotation. Our rookie Ryan Dunn. Was able to get some minutes in the second half of the season. Dalton connects six points, 49% from three. As you can see, almost all of his shots are really just three-point shots. 49% from the field, 49% from three. Um, but no, love the season that we had, man. 55 wins. I wish I was able to show y'all everything in real time. Um, this is only now with a 13, 14-minute video. The last video is going to be 49 minutes to give y'all a little bit of, of, um, of some understanding. But yeah, the storyline with Chris Paul, man, before we get out of here, Chris Paul chose to opt and go to the Brooklyn Nets, who at the time when Chris Paul came, they were probably two games out of the play in. And so I was like, you know, it ain't the worst choice, but the Jazz were already in the play in. And I love the way this Jazz team look. You throw Chris Paul in here. You have Keontae George as his backup that he can mentor. Colin Sexton becomes your sixth man of the year or sixth man. You got Beal and Paul in the backcourt. Uh, Isaac Okoro as a shutdown wing defender who, was he shooting threes well this year? Let me see. 35% from three from Isaac Okoro is, is nice. Um, 
You got Abaje off the bench still. Taylor Hendricks. What type of season did he have? He gave you 9, 5, 2, 33% from three. Uh, Walker Kessler gave you 10 and 12 with three blocks, 50% from the field. They really had like a solid team. And again, with Chris Paul, I think a lot of this elevates. And you probably are able to win that play-in game. Kobe Bufkin gave you 18 points in that play-in game in, in 17 minutes. 17, I mean, uh, 17 points in 18 minutes against the Rockets in that play-in game. It's been a nice team for him to come to. But instead, Chris Paul went to the Nets and he didn't do shit. Look at the 4 of 11, 11 and 7, 3 and 11, 0 of 4, 2 of 6, 1 of 5, 2 and 6, 2 of 6, 1 of 6. Just, just not really doing shit. 2 of 8. Not really doing shit at all. Should have took his ass to the Jazz, man. Should have took his ass to the Jazz. Cam Thomas. How much did you average? I wonder why he wasn't the most improved player. He almost had 50-40. But yeah, man, we had a really good, incredible year. And the 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 Bucks though. The Bucks. Look at those contracts, man. They ain't about to be 35. So we'll probably man, Middleton is probably gonna have to go into free agency. He had a weak ass year. This is a weak ass season for him, man. Injured as fuck again. Barely around. Brogdon is a free agent too. A lot of money gonna be clear for them. I'll give you that. They got 31 million going, 22. That's already about 55, 56 million dollars off the books. Another 10 from Russ. It's almost 66, 67 million dollars. Um, that's about 69, almost 70 million dollars. You probably bring back Bochamp. This is about the now we're about at 70 plus million dollars. Yeah, they have about 70 million dollars coming off the books, and you don't really have anybody extensive to re-sign. It ain't like you got a, a, a rookie con a rookie contract that you got to extend for Buku Bucks. You got Dame, Giannis, and Bobby Porters all under contract. You build around that three. And if not, if it ain't a free agency pool that they can thrive in, you got to either think about trading Giannis or trading Dame. I don't know what Dame value is going to be, but there's a lot of teams are looking at Orlando. Um, it's a lot of teams that could use him right now. It's a lot of teams um, around the league that I'm looking at. A lot of teams. The Lakers, I made LeBron younger. I just did this. I don't want y'all to think he played any game as a 30-year-old. Once the playoffs started, I dropped his age from 30 to from 40 to 30. Um, this is the workaround to trying to get him to not retire because, you know, they retire LeBron. Um, so I'm hoping this works. This is a suggestion I got from somebody that said just make him younger or make his contract longer. Let's also do that. Let's just let's give him. Let's give him. Um, and then once the offseason starts, the first thing in the offseason is players retired. Once we get past that page, if we can escape LeBron from retiring. We'll then make him age 40 again and make him back on a one-year deal that is going to expire. So hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then damn, we lose LeBron. If it does, shout out to whoever gave us that suggestion. But yeah, man, it's going to be an interesting offseason. It's going to be a very, very interesting offseason. A lot of interesting storylines. Um, uh, before we get up out of here, though, for the sake of the Bucks, because that's my new interest. Who are the upcoming free agents? Jimmy Butler is an upcoming free agent. Is he a real free agent or is this a player option bullshit? Because I think he's going to accept that $50 million player option. Yes. So he's not really a free agent. Evan Mobley will get the extension. Kyrie. Kyrie oh, he has a player option. These guys are going to sign those rookie extensions. Who's a real free agent? Laurie Markinen is a real free agent. Chris Middleton. 
Yeah, so I mean, you let Chris Middleton go. I mean, what? Miles Turner, you can go after. It's a lot of guys who just rookies signing rookie extensions. Drew Holiday, do you bring Drew Holiday back? I know in real life he signed an extension, but not in this. Do you bring him back then? It's not that. It's not. It's not that much out here for the Bucks to get better. Rudy. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of attention is going to be at Lonzo if we have a really good playoff run. D'Angelo Russell will be out here for them. Yep. Yeah. We should see the Frey Van Vliet. There are some options, but it's nothing out of this world. It's nothing out of this world, and it's nothing that I think they would need if they wanted to keep together the Giannis Dame duo. It's no 3 and D. It's no Supreme 3 and D wings out here. At all. You know what I'm saying? Like, at all. So, yeah, man, I appreciate y'all. Again, a thousand apologies. I really wish we could have had the first version of this video out, man. Huh, 55 wins. I wish y'all could have just saw how we was dominating the second half of the season. All of the drama, seeing the play-in games unfold in real time. But don't worry. I'm going to do my pregame routine for the playoffs. The next, this, this shit, this video ain't shit. The playoffs is about to be busting like real life this shit look at this look at this fucking bracket this shit is about to be a slug fest the clippers mavericks is gonna be nice matter of fact knicks magic the knicks magic play first let's just let's just get let's just take a look at what the knicks magic do let's let's simcast their game Uh-oh. Magic taking care of business at the home four. Nick's trying to stay alive. Nick make uh-oh. Nick's ain't going out easy. I think that's enough of a lead. I think they got it. Yeah. Orlando takes game one. Paulo Bancaro didn't shoot the ball well, but still 15-15. Yeah. 17 7 and 5 for Franz Anthony Simons 3 and 9 the Knicks the Knicks just couldn't score points cuz it looked like they did all right defensively Brunson 29 7 and 8 nobody else did shit DeJounte Murray took 18 shots Randall took 16 to get 21 points 34 shots to get 21 points between the two disgusting I think the other game was these two Give y'all this sneak peek since I fucked up Play, let's see simcast some of these games and there it is boston looking like the better team on paper and on the floor oh shit don't speak too soon don't speak too soon no they didn't philly came back hey because I messed up the last video, I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna watch this game together. I'm gonna get in the middle. I ain't on no side. I'm gonna put my headphones on because I want to be able to hear the game sound just like y'all are. I'm gonna still be talking and, and and all of that. Don't worry. Let's bring this down a little bit so it ain't too loud. Y'all ready? Let's look at the box score real quick so we know what is going on. Let's look at fouls, because they always fouling people out in the Sims. Nobody fouled out for the Sixers. Przingis is fouled out for the Celtics. Brown has five fouls. Horford has five fouls. Five fouls. Brown is killing. Tatum and Brown are doing their duo shit. Okay. They doing their duo shit, y'all. 34 and 10, 28, 5, 4. They own it. They own their shit. And then the 76ers, 23, 13, 4, two blocks. Maxi 18 and 8. They just got a team effort right now surrounded about surrounded by their big three. And B not even in the game right now. Oh yeah, okay. He is, he is, he is. He is. That's fouled out for Al Horford. Stupid ass foul. He's smiling and shit. You don't know that Porzingis is fouled out. No common sense from CPU. 
You never get common sense from CPU, man. It's amazing how little of common sense that they give people in this game. Pascal. Playoff basketball, man. This is good. This is good. They got Mo Bamba getting playoff minutes right now. Cam Reddish checking in for Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry taking a seat on the bench. Two-point lead for the Philadelphia 76ers. Siakam at the line trying to make it a three-point game. Two minutes and 53 seconds left. Al Horford just fouled out for any of you that just tuned into this game. They ain't, why 2K got Derek White with hair? He's bald now, man. Y'all so behind on every damn thing. It irritates the hell out of me. Hand off to Mobamba. He's going back court. That's why he doesn't play or shouldn't play. That is why right there. Simple handoff, and he went back court. That was disgusting, 2K. Why is that shit like that even in the game? Even if it is Mobamba, that is just terrible. De'Anthony Melton control the ball. Siakam up top, guarded by Jason Tatum. Back to De'Anthony Melton. Joel Embiid coming up. Setting the left side ball screen. Dump down Embiid. Bucket on Mobamba. 76 is up by five now. Two minutes Left into this ball game. The 76ers comfortable lead now. Jalen Brown going right at Cam Reddish. And he picks up his fourth foul. And Jalen Brown is going to the free throw line because he could not stop Jalen Brown from going downhill while driving with his left hand. We don't think Cam Reddish had that on a scouting report that he can go to the basket with his left. Talk around NBA Twitter. Brown sinks the first, cuts the lead down to four. Him and Jason Tatum continue to put this team on their back from an offensive standpoint. Big free throw right here to make this a one possession game. Jalen Brown misses and B with another rebound to Reddish. Reddish brings it up, throwing it up a quick ahead. To Siakam, to De'Anthony De Melton, back to Siakam on a give and go. Transition bucket off of a missed free throw. Unacceptable defense. You got to imagine Joe Mazzulli is pissed off right now. Brown driving right again. He scores on Siakam. Tough bucket. Sixers up four as Tyrese Maxey brings it up. Throws it to Embiid. Embiid going at Mo Bamba, hands it off to De'Anthony Melton. They're going to go right to a pick and roll, I would guess. Oh, no, an isolation from the elbow. Uh oh, and B with another bucket, just unstoppable. Too much to handle for Mo Bamba. At this point, you damn near got to just put Jason Tatum at five because there's no reason to have Mo Bamba out there. He ain't doing shit offensively, and he ain't doing shit defensively. He gets the ball in the paint on Embiid. He damn near about to get a three second. He go up. He gets his own rebound. Don't go up again. Kick it out. Drew Holiday open three. He missed it. That contract year is in his mind. That miss right there, he just lost $5 million. They give it up to Maxi. Maxi going at Drew. He don't give a damn about his defensive prowess. Drew makes him pick it up. Kicks it out to Reddish. Reddish fakes pass. Right. Oh, wow. That was a big three. It was almost falling. We got a minute left down six. Holiday brings it up. Jason Tatum hasn't touched the ball in I don't know how long. Jalen Brown just threw up some bullshit. Rebound by Siakam. Tatum hasn't gotten the ball since we've tuned into this game. Flashy pass from Maxi to Embiid. Another floater over Mobamba. Joe Mazzula finally uses a timeout when they're down eight with 45 seconds left. It don't even matter why you're using the timeouts now. Jason Tatum still shaking hands, trying to be fake supportive to his teammates, even though he has to be mad as hell right now that he ain't got a shot in the last three minutes of this game. It's been all Jalen Brown. Philadelphia feeling real good right now. And B put two of their bigs in foul trouble. And this entire last three minute stretch, he's feasted barbecue chicken all on Mobamba. And Joe Mazzula, they inbounded and called another timeout. He must have saw what people said on Twitter. Now he's making sure he uses his timeouts. Even if they're stupidly being used, he's using them. Jalen Brown coming off the screen. Mobamba not throwing it to him. He's going to wait to potentially get a five-second call. Now he throws it in. Brown going at Cam Reddish. Right-hand layup. He makes it. He makes it. Six-point game. 
39 seconds left. They inbound the ball to DeAnthony Melton. Derek White pressing them. Tatum comes in. Double team them at half. Now they foul. Now they foul. Derek White, boy, I'm so glad you got your head ball because that shit there. I forgot how crazy your shit used to look. DeAnthony Melton at the free throw line. Can he put away the Boston Celtics with two free throws made right here? He can. He knocks down the first. Now a three-possession game with a seven-point lead comfortably out here in Philadelphia. He makes the second. Eight-point lead. Brown brings it up. He's going to go at Reddish again. Probably shoot some more stupid shit. He's attacking. Reddish is locking him up. He missed. Game-winning rebound. Maxi brings it up. Dribbles out. That's game one, folks. Game one in the books. Philadelphia 76ers take it. The Boston Celtics have to go back to the drawing board to figure out how they can limit Joel and B without fouling. Because they're going to need Przingis and Horford if they want to have a chance in this one. An incredible first round game one start for the Philadelphia 76ers. Jason Tatum, I can't wait to see that post game interview without getting a single touch in the last three and a half minutes of the game. Joel B, your player of the game. Sponsored by New Balance. Shout out to Joel B, wear Skechers. That was a crazy ass game, man. Jalen Brown took that dumb ass shot. Drew Holiday didn't give them nothing. And they didn't look for Tatum. Grizzlies and Timberwolves is before this. Okay. This the game. This is my number one highly anticipated series. And they going back and forth already. I would love. Oh, Timberwolves. Wow. Wow. They coming back though. What the hell? They start, bro. They just had a 30 to 16 start to the third and then a 16 to four run to start the fourth. These comes comebacks be crazy. We jumping in. That's what I was about to say. I want to jump into another one. Let's jump in. This is my favorite matchup right here. And for the Grizzlies to come all the way back has is really satisfying to see. Box score. Anthony Edwards with 18. Nobody really scoring crazily. Towns is fouled out. Nikhil Alexander is fouled out. It's always somebody fouled out. But nobody's really doing any heavy lifting scoring-wise. On the other side, Ja Morant, 24, 6, and 8. Anybody fouled out over here? No. All right. A minute 36 left. We out here tuned in to the Target Center. We're in Minnesota right now. Rudy Gobert interbounds the ball to Anthony Edwards. He's being guarded by D'Angelo Russell, former teammate. He's driving. Dumps it down to Nas Reed. Nas Reed with the and one over D'Angelo Russell. He picks up his fourth foul. Grizzlies and Taylor Jenkins make subs. Brandon Clark and D'Angelo Russell take their ass to the bench because they gave up that dumbass foul. And now you see the rookie sensation, rookie of the year, Alexander Saar come back in with Marcus Smart, a more defensive-minded guard. Nas Reed at the free throw line looking to make this a two-possession game if he can finish off this old-fashioned three-point play. Boom, he does. 99-95 lead for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Ja Morant bringing it up. Mike Conley guarding him behind the back. He's going. He kicks it out to Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson waiting on the back screen. Ja Morant. Nothing there. Kicks it to Alex Saar. Ja Morant comes off the down screen for Marcus Smart. Misses the three. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. He pushes it to Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards bringing it up the court with speed. He gives it to Mike Conley, who settles down his young ball club. He gives it back to his leader, Edwards. They're getting organized. Right side screen comes from Reed. Anthony Edwards with a dagger. He misses. Saar with the rebound. He's pushing it up the court. He gives it to Ja Morant. Ja Morant coming down. 47 seconds left. He dumps it down to Marcus Smart with an and one. Silly ass foul from Anthony Edwards. He picks up his fifth. Rudy Gobert goes up and tells him, that's the dumb ass shit Donovan Mitchell used to do. Don't piss me off, little boy. And Anthony Edwards said, yeah, you're right, you're right. I did used to watch Donovan Mitchell give up them silly ass and ones too. Marcus Smart, green hair still. He still thinks he's a Celtic, even though Memphis does not wear green. They haven't worn green since they were in Vancouver. He's at the free throw line. He can make this a one-point game if he 
knocks this down. The Timberwolves sub and Troy Brown Jr., why on earth would they ever do such things in this type of game? I don't know, but they don't have depth, so they're forced to play Troy Brown Jr. Anthony Edwards got it. He's being guarded by Marcus Smart. Mike Conley comes off the Iverson screen. Now Rudy comes up, sets it on the right-hand side. Edwards pulls up again, the same shot he just took. He missed, but Rudy gets the offensive rebound, and he goes up that weak-ass layup. Anybody else 7-2 would have dunked it. But he lays it up like a like a soft big bandit, but he makes it. One possession game. And Anthony Edwards goes up to Rudy and tell him, good shit, boy. Because I don't know what the fuck I was thinking taking back-to-back -back dumbass shots. But you had my back. I'm 5 for 19, but I'm still finna be pulling like a Michael Jordan. Good way to have my back out there when I'm taking when I'm doing dumbass shit. I can't control myself. I can't control that dumbass shot selection I got sometimes in the clutch, but you got my back. Alex Sar dumps it into John Morant. John Morant comes off. Marcus Smart with the Iris screen. 2K's favorite play. Now he gets a screen from Alex Sar. Is he gonna pull up? No, nah, he throws it back. Sar with the left hand layup because Rudy was distracted by John Morant. Now they're on the foul, the foul game. Marcus Smart is arguing an intentional foul. He's the first player in history to intentional foul and then argue it. You have to love 2K in this, this, this world that they create where dumbass shit constantly happens. Let me argue an intentional foul that I was trying to commit. I'm going to argue it. Desmond Bain finally checks in the game for Taylor Jenkins with 17 seconds left. Oh, shit. Anthony Edwards misses. He misses, y'all. One-point game still here in Minnesota. Can he make this a two-point game? He makes it. Taylor Jenkins has no timeouts. The Grizzlies got to play this last 18 seconds out. John Moran has the ball. Top of the key. He's moving on. Mike Conley. They're spacing out. It's five out right now, and it's John Morant's world. Everybody else is just living in it. He goes over. Mike Conley, and he fucking makes it. He calls him a little baby-ass boy. He ties the game up with 4.9 seconds left here in Minnesota. We potentially have overtime on our hands. John Moran is pumped. He's doing, he's doing a gun celebration. I'm just joking. Can somebody give us a game winner? Anthony Edwards, you know what is on his mind based off the last two shots he's taken. You know what Anthony Edwards has in mind. Chris Finch clapping, no clipboard, which means he ain't draw up a damn thing. Here we go. Game one of the Western Conference playoff matchup of the Memphis Grizzlies against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yep, Anthony Edwards gets it. Driving on. Marcus Smart pulls up in his damn face, and it rims out. Another dumbass shot. That's three in a row for Anthony Edwards. You think he care about winning? Fuck no. He want to be a hero. He think he Ant-Man. Ant the hero. We got, we got, we got overtime. We got to see how long is this overtime. Five minutes. We going to simulate a little bit of this, y'all. Simulate Minnesota taking the lead. Yep, Minnesota. Okay. Okay. Six point lead. Any answer, Memphis? That might be it, ladies and gents. That's it. No need to watch that bullshit. Minnesota escapes, even though Anthony Everest was playing like a complete jackass. That he, he escaped. It, did we get game one of this too? I would love to jump into this. Then we this is our last one for real. Then we then we wrap it up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. These games is good. Ain't no ain't no blowouts like the play in. These games are good. It's a low scoring game, but it looked like Denver gonna take this. Uh-oh. Hold on. Let me not speak too soon. I'll be speaking fast. Nah, yeah, Denver got this one in the bag. Boom. Denver with the three-point win. 21, 16, and 7 for Jokic. Curry with 27. Wiggins tried to step up. Nobody else gave him some help. Klay Thompson, 2 8 from 3. Um, that's a wrap on this episode, man. I hope y'all enjoyed that little glimpse into the playoffs. The uh, 76ers and uh, Celtics game was nice, and Memphis, Minnesota was nice as well. Um, 
Memphis really could have had that win, but uh, I don't know what they did in that overtime. But the way Anthony Edwards was shooting, they should have won that game. Uh, I'll see y'all next episode to get this playoffs really under par or under underway, under par. I got a Masters update right here. I'm sorry. I'm in my golf brand. I am Pete with a plug. This is Pete with a gamer. As always, I appreciate y'all. See y'all next episode. I'm out. Peace.